Hey, I'm I, Steve Jensky. I'm a professor at the University of Miami Frost School of Music. And uh, I've been teaching research for uh, since the early 90s uh, and uh, have been, uh, I'm going to be comparing qualitative and quantitative research on a relatively superficial level, just give you kind of a beginner's uh, look at it. Uh, uh, as a quantitative researcher, uh, I attended the first uh, a, a qualitative research conference at the University of Illinois in the, in the early 90s, and a project that my advisor Chuck Schmidt and I did uh, was cited by uh, uh, the editor of the Journal of Research Music Education, uh, 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 Rudy Radosi, as an example of qualitative research uh, uh, published in the JRME which was much to my surprise because we did a content analysis of over 1,500 quantitative research studies. Uh, and I said, oh, I guess I am a qualitative researcher too. Uh, and as it turned out, uh, it, through the years, although I've done a lot of uh, work with students uh, on qual quantitative research projects. I've also done some work with qualitative. I've served on those committees. Uh, you you met uh, Margaret just now. I, I worked with Margaret on her first uh, doctoral research project, which is an oral history project she did with me. Uh, and 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 I and I, I enjoy working in both realms. And and I think one of the things that struck me was we make this false dichotomy between the two types, although there are differences, uh, but there, there are also many, many similarities. And that's what I'm gonna try to talk about today. Um, so let's see if I can get this to work. Okay, there we go. So first, I use uh, in my own research teaching a very broad uh, and simple and stupid definition of uh, research, which is a systematic approach to asking and answering questions about something. Whatever your something is, is what you're researching. Uh, and, and you do this through gathering information or data. Uh, so we ask the questions in a systematic uh, manner, we get info in a systematic manner, and we answer in a systematic manner. So ask and answer questions. That's what we do in, in all research. Um, so, and we also take research, uh, and my first research teacher, Gene Siner at Indiana University, uh, used to use the analogy of puzzle building as uh, research, using your study and fitting in with every other study. Uh, and, and I think this is another thing that we do in helping to create a picture. So a picture of what we know about something. And again, I'm using something as a, a technical term. Uh, so when we look at qualitative research and quantitative research, they come from different uh, roots. Uh, the qualitative research comes, uh, quantitative research comes out of scientific method, biological and uh, psychological sciences. Uh, uh, and it uses uh, observation and quantification uh, of variables to uh, focusing on representative uh, samples and generalizing results. Uh, qualitative research comes out of post-positivism, an idealist philosophy, uh, Manuel Kant, uh, a, who states, uh, we can't know the world directly, we can only know it indirectly. Uh, and that it, it, uh, we see things in our own minds and everyone's knowledge is their own. It's not, my knowledge is not your knowledge. Uh, and uh, it, it comes out of history and sociology and anthropology and uh, a, a, we, ethnomusicology, uh, lots of different uh, disciplines that use these things. I sometimes talk about music theory versus musicology and how uh, they're still looking at music. They're just looking at it in different ways. Uh, now, some, some assumptions, when we look at the two paradigms that I think are worth uh, making a comparison and contrast, uh, the assumptions that we see, uh, wait a second. Yeah, okay. Uh, assumptions uh, 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 
learned that we have an independent reality. Quantitative researchers say this. Uh, we can know how things work. Uh, it should be objective. Uh, and facts and values are independent and that we want to understand how things work or the nature of reality. Uh, and of course, uh, to quote my favorite Woody Allen movie, uh, uh, Love and Death, uh, there's a line in that movie uh, that talks about objectivity and uh, uh, the character in the movie says, objectivity is subjective. Uh, so uh, all of these things that quantitative researchers say they do in terms of trying to make things objectives is subject to their own biases anyway. Uh, and the, what I always liked about qualitative research is they actually acknowledge that and embrace that where quantitative research kind of neg negated the context. So uh, the idea of being objective, we are, we are, uh, interpreting in qualitative research based on our own background and experiences and that's part of the method uh, and the values are important the facts and values help to interpret uh, and, and, and and it's okay to have ambiguity uh, I've sometimes thought that uh, people who are qualitative researchers can embrace ambiguity a little easier than the quantitative folks who, who want to have the the answer well, sometimes the answer is not going to be there to start out. And anyone who's honest about it knows that. Uh, and the overall goal in qualitative research is not to understand how things go necessarily, although that is a goal, but it's to understand as best you can with all the tools at your disposal. Uh, now, some similarities when we look at qualitative and quantitative research is both paradigms answer questions related to some purpose. You're, you're researching about something. Uh, both paradigms are empirical. And people sometimes, beginning researchers, think that empirical means uh, test scores and things like that. Empirical means data. Now, the kind of data that you, you collect uh, it might be uh, test scores, numbers on, on a measure, or it might be words and, and themes that come out of interviews and, and observations. Uh, data is data is data is data. Uh, so we know that, uh, it, you know, it's the same thing. Uh, and the analysis is done on the data. So we don't just make up results in qualitative research. It's based on something. It's based on data that is collected. Qualitative research does this. Quantitative research does this. Uh, maybe we use statistical analysis in one realm and thematic in another. Or maybe we use both in both. Uh, the overall fam format of articles is similar, although not exactly the same. Uh, and both paradigms uh, use theory and literature to provide context for the results that they uh, uh, come up with. Now, so those are the similarities. Some of the differences, however, I've mentioned already the positive versus post-positivist philosophical basis, which makes it uh, hard to necessarily uh, equate the two types of research. And one of the things that I, I've always driven me nuts is for uh, qualitative researchers or quantitative researchers, whatever side you happen to be on, using the criteria of one research paradigm to critique the other research paradigm. They have different uh, things that are important in each research type. Uh, and uh, for qualitative researchers, uh, as a quantitatively trained person, I can't use quantitative criteria when I'm looking at a qualitative study and looking at the quality of a qualitative study. It just doesn't work. And it shouldn't be uh, what I do. Now, another big difference between the two uh, research paradigms is the purpose, overall purpose. Now, we have a purpose in both, but the purpose with quantitative many times, and I, this is an oversimplification, is to answer the question, how do things work? Now, qualitative research does that too, but 
in, in addition, qualitative research will many times, much more than qualitative re quantitative research, qualitative uh, researchers will ask the question and try to answer the question, what do things mean? So how do things work? What do things mean? Uh, another thing that we see is that uh, the, the relationship of researchers uh, and is detached or involved. Uh, we see a context uh, of the two types where one is uh, quantitative negates the context, qualitative embraces the context. And we know that data sources uh, are going to be different. Now, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to skip this one because I'm down to my two minute warning, uh, but it's a, a lot of the same stuff. Um, and uh, let's just say this: uh, qualitative research and quali quantitative research do different things. Uh, both use theory. Some will generate theory. Some will verify theory. Some use uh, a quantitative research looks at cause and effect. Uh, qualitative research can many times be used to create new hypotheses, and it's really great for new phenomena. Uh, and when we look at theory use, uh, we know that qualitative research uh, will, uh, as Margaret mentioned, uh, is done in an inductive manner from the top, the bottom up, whereas quantitative research uses theory to be verified and starts with a deductive use. So we know that it's used in a different way. Uh, now, we can do combinations of qualitative and quantitative research uh, through uh, triangulation design, where we use one to verify the other results. We can use uh, a explanatory, exploratory designs. Uh, one refines findings, others gives direction to, to the research. And uh, really, uh, what, we're, what we see is uh, uh, that qualitative and quantitative research, just the bottom line here, is that the, the similarities are, are more than the differences. Uh, they both answer questions. They both use data. They both use analysis. Uh, they may have some differences in how they ask questions and their focus, macro versus micro focus, uh, and how they uh, do context and data. But for people who are doing research, uh, I, I think do research. If, you're, if you use a qualitative approach that's appropriate for the research problem you're looking at, great. If, you, if the quantitative approach is more appropriate, that's what you use. And one is not better than the other, they're just different. So that's, that's, that's my presentation. Awesome.